Well, Albert have just released a brand new bike and they're claiming some significant aero gains. And this bike also has some really nice features on it that I actually like. So let's roll that intro and let's get into and have a look at this new bike Albert have got called the Orca. Now, Orbea are climbing a 28 watt advantage at 40 kilometers an hour and a 28 watt advantage at 50 kilometers an hour. Now, they don't actually say what they've compared that to. So, you know, what bike or what frame that they use to compare that to so they could get that 28 watt advantage or that 15 watt advantage. So, I would probably say that would be a standard frame with round tubes that they would have compared it to. So, you can take that gain however you would like, but it is some advantage. And they do stipulate the reasons how they've managed to get this aero advantage. There's fork optimization, obviously, and there's the head tube to down tube optimization. They've lowered the seat stay, so they come to the top of the back tire, so turbulence is kept to a minimum. They've also optimized and built proprietary drink bottles that are fitted very, very close to the frame. And they also have a toolbox that they fit in front of the bottom bracket that then actually reduces that space between the front wheel and a frame, which would have, which would make an, a very big difference because you're reducing that turbulence there off the back of the wheel. Now, it needs to be noted that the toolbox is not UCI compliant because it is not a essential part of the bike that gives an aero advantage. So if you're riding in a UCI race, you would not be able to use that toolbox adaption to the frame. Now, just talking about parts on a bike that are not UCI compliant, if you're going to make something like that, then why not make the whole bike that's not UCI compliant? So you just go for it like full aero and you make bikes that are not designed to be racing in the pro peloton, but are designed for pure aero opt optimization. And I think people would actually be into that, but that's a whole nother discussion for another video. Now, just to have a bit of a closer look at this bike, there's a number of features on it which they've used, which are either unusual or I can't really see how they give an advantage. Now, one of those is the forks. Now, they're saying because they're running wider rims now and wider tyres, we do know the top of the rim is going twice the speed of the bike. So as the wheel comes up from the down tube up to the fork, it's, it's traveling or accelerating to twice the speed of the bicycle. So that creates quite a bit of turbulence there. And they're saying that they've made the forks wider, which somehow reduces the amount of turbulence around the top of that tire where it's going through the fork. Now, I'm not too sure how this works. And I, and I think this is probably, if it does work, would be pretty minimal. The other thing that they've said as well, the top tube is straight and also the chain stays are straight. Now the chain stay, what they've done is they've put a little bit of a kick at the back of it. Now, this to me is completely illogical because as soon as you go from a straight tube, you actually weaken it. So you have to put more material in there where it's got the elbow to give it back the same strength. And at that point on the bicycle, the, the turbulated air that's going over the chain stay would have very, very aero benefit because you're at the back part of the bike. So I don't know if that's a little bit of a gimmick or what, but uh, we're not seeing any technical figures given by Orbea, so we, we don't we don't really know. So we can only speculate what they are, but I, I would say that making a tube that's got a kink in it is a just a bit of fashion there. Now getting onto tyres, they're saying that the bike has been optimised for 28 and 25 mil tyres. Now, this is the road that uh, Cannondale went with their System 6. And it, it does make sense because if a rim's a certain width and we optimize the tire to that width, we're gonna get an aero benefit. And I spoke about this in uh, one of my previous videos and I'll just link that up the top here so you can go and have a look at it. But I was talking about the 105% rule in that video, but it makes sense if they're making those tires and rims by, I don't know what brand's coming on the bike. I think it might be a Shimano rim. 
and they're optimizing the tire for that rim, that makes sense that they're going to get aero gains. Now most of the bikes are going for these integrated headsets, disc brakes and these lighter frames that they're making to obviously compensate for the group sets that are getting heavier and I've spoken about that in a few other videos and I'll link that up there as well. Now they're using, they're claiming that they've got this special technology but it's not really special. Most of the manufacturers are using it where they're either using a EPS system which is a um, expandable polystyrene or they're using a and then a latex coating on that and then they use that as like a blank to make the parts of the bike so therefore they get better compression so they can make the bikes with less material and make them lighter so that's a technology they're using in their top line frame i think the cheaper frame they're not and that actually is a bit heavier but it does see that the industry is going this way. They're having to make the frames lighter to compensate for the, for the weight on the disc brakes and the groups as, as they're, they're adding on the weight. Now they are claiming the bike is stiffer and they do have this video, which you can see right here, that shows that there's a torsional strength and they're applying a pressure to some fake pedals to show you how they've increased the torsional strength. But what they haven't shown is a comparison to another frame or an older frame so we can see the difference. So we don't really know if it is actually stiffer because this is, seems to be a typical claim that manufacturers have with every new model. Now where this new Orca bike, I really like some of the features they put in it which relate to fit. Now a lot of these bikes which I've criticized in previous videos, they've got these complete one piece handlebar stem sets with integrated components and you have to buy a whole new handlebar stem handlebar system and of course you know they say that they they'll you can get them to fit but when you go into a bike shop these stem handlebar systems are usually pretty expensive and bike shops don't want to carry these things because they get stuck with them so it can be a little bit of a pain depending on where you buy the bike from if you want to get this swapped out but what the orca bike has done they've used a kind of crossover system from the new integrated system to the old system where you had a stem and a handlebar that fitted into that stem. So therefore you can buy a separate handlebar and buy a separate stem and the stem length then can be bought to whatever you like and the handlebar width can be bought to whatever you like. And they also have a proprietary handlebar they've made which gives you a little bit of a reduced reach and also a 15 mil rise. So it's got like a kink as it comes out like this out of the stem. And of course, then if you wanted to customize the bike further because you felt the bike was a little bit too long and you didn't want to push the seat forward, you can use one of these handlebars so you can really customize your fit. The other great thing they've done is, is that with the, the seat clamp, they've made it a reversible seat clamp. So you have one set of adjustments on it with the seat clamps facing backwards and then you can turn them around and then the seat clamp faces forward. So then you get that extra reach to move the seat forward if you like that sort of setup. So in all this bike to me, where it really is head and shoulders above a lot of the other brands, is you can make this bike fit you. And it's all right to go out and buy a really, really fast bike, but if you can't get comfortable on it or you can't put your watts out because you're not in the right position or the bike bike fitter can't get the components on that bike right so it fits you properly, you're not going to be able to put out the watts and you're not going to be that aero. So what I really like about this bike, this Orca, they've captured some of the older technology that was there so you could adjust your bike and put it into the new systems that with the bikes are putting out but giving you the flexibility that we used to have. And I think that's a really great thing that they've done with this, this particular frame. When they did their testing criteria, they did it in a velodrome and they used different frames and compared them to the new Orca frame with putting all of the other components on the bike. And they got the riders to go out there and put out the same watts and see what the speed was and keeping everything as the same as they can inside a velodrome where there's no air or wind movement. They found that they had some advantages. They also did the same thing with a hill climb saying that they actually climbed at the same watts faster and this is aided by their, their claim of their extra torsional strength. So again, there was no comparison 
as such, which they gave to the old one. They just said it was better. And uh, they've got some really nice videos to show that they're, they're doing it. So we don't really know what to make of those claims. I mean, really, when we look at these aero gains, they're becoming more marginal. You know, as bikes get bigger benefits as they go along, the increase that they're going to get from their design is going to be smaller and smaller and smaller. But what we don't know in this case, did they actually use the toolkit on the bike or did they do the test without the toolkit and make it UCI legal? So they may actually getting, be getting some advantage that they're claiming by a component that's on the bike that's not UCI compliant, which, you know, could be, you could really argue, well, mm, that, that's not really a true comparison because every other brand's bike is UCI compliant and they've built the bike to be UCI compliant. So if you're saying that, hey, look, we're comparing a UCI bike with a non-UCI bike, then of course the one that doesn't meet the UCI regulations can have some advantage because your design is freer to change things on the bike. And that's what this toolkit does. It, it takes away that turbulent air that's behind the front wheel, which would have turbulated, and this toolbox sits closer to the front wheel which then would limit the amount of turbulence there coming through onto the bottom bracket. So in conclusion, should you buy this bike? Now, this bike obviously is in the realms of all of the newer bikes. It's got the integrated handlebars. It's designed for pretty much electric installation. It's got disc brakes and it's, it's very aero. They seem to be really rolling out these aero bikes at the moment and pushing that, that side of cycling because I think with the weight, they're struggling to get the weights down to the UCI weight. So, you know, let's talk aero so people aren't talking about light weight. But on the whole scheme of things, I think this bike is probably a very good buy compared to a lot of the other bikes on the moment. And not because it's the most aero and it saves you, you know, 28 watts or 15 watts, but because this bike it has a lot of the modern features and a lot of people like that, especially the integrated handlebars. They like the integrated handlebars because it looks very clean. The bikes look very clean. And a lot of people do like buying disc brakes. And if they want a bike like that, but uh, they also want a bike that fits them, especially if you are a person who sits behind a computer most of the time or is an office worker who's not as flexible as maybe some other people or the younger people are, this bike could actually be a really good option for you. But do be aware that the, all these bikes even though I believe this is a, a Spanish company, they're all made in China. So they would all be made in China and probably assembled in Taiwan, but they all are. So really that's, that's something that stays pretty equal. So looking at it from, if you're going to want to buy one of these top end bikes, this is probably a really good option due to the adjustments they have on the bike so you can get that bike, you can dial that bike in so you're really comfortable on it. And if you're comfortable on it, you can ride longer, you can enjoy your bike more, and possibly even put out more watts, and even probably be more aero. Well, anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. 